Uh, this is BBC Radio Shropshire's 25 past 10. As you've been hearing, Shropshire's acute hospitals have declared their second critical incident within a week. One of the main issues, as we've been hearing, is trying to discharge patients and the fact that there are no, not the non-availability of transfers to social care. That was one of the factors that was blamed for last Friday's incident. Uh, Dr Jane Townsend is Chief Executive of the Home Care Association. Jane, thank you for being with us um, um, this morning. What's the situation from your point of view? Well, nationally, the demand for home care is greatly exceeding supply. Home care providers have done a stellar job increasing their capacity by about 15% over the last year or so. But they've done that by using existing staff. So recruitment and retention remain very challenging. Pay terms and conditions are a key reason for that. Competition with other business sectors. COVID restrictions, we've seen maybe 20,000, between 20,000 and 40,000 home care workers leaving the sector from the point that the government announced they were going to consult on vaccination as a condition of deployment. And now we have new issues arising with changes in testing policy, which is also creating difficulties with the workforce. So a very challenging situation. Um, I've just been speaking to Mark Pritchard, the Conservative MP for the Reekin. He said, words to the effect of, if you pay people more, then um, they'll be more willing to work in the, in, in the care sector. Is that fair? We've seen a squeeze of these council fee rates for over 10 years, and that means that the wages that care workers can be paid are limited, and so many care workers don't get properly rewarded and recognised for the skill and experience which they bring to the role and which are required. So we're, we're... really need to see that being addressed and unfortunately the adult social care reforms that the government has put forward do not address the workforce issues. They've allocated only £111 per person per year for three years and that isn't going to be enough to address the issues. What would be enough? What would need to be done to to address the issues so that anyone who has had had finished their time was ready for discharge from hospital, uh, but needed to go on to uh, get to go go to the, go, in, go into the care sector, had somewhere to go, um, and had the package that had all of the package that they need without any question? What would what would what do we need to make that happen? What we're calling for is parity with equivalent roles in the NHS. We want uh, home care workers to be recognised for the the difficulty of their role and the vital nature of their role because, as we've seen in Shropshire, if the home care isn't there, the hospitals sort of grind to a halt. They can't discharge people, which means they can't admit people. That contributes to ambulance queues. It contributes to operations being cancelled and so on. So we need the government to invest a serious amount of money, uh, you know, and and that requires... All of us as citizens to be willing to increase the tax that we pay or or to purchase insurance or something. Um, But the estimates are roughly 10 to 14 billion per year extra needed, which sounds a lot. But if you think that the government currently spends about 160 billion on the NHS and only about 22 billion on social care, So there's a big disparity in investment between the two and we need to see greater investment in home care and community support so we can develop the workforce and innovate and enable people to live well at home, which what everybody wants, um, extend healthy lifespan, reduce inequalities, take pressure off the NHS and reduce costs for the health and care system. There's two very different solutions you just mentioned there. One is that we pay more tax and that the government um, uses that money to, 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 to spend on social care. The other is that we it becomes our responsibility and we are we we buy insurance and if we don't have insurance then we don't get don't get social care. That's two really um, polar opposite approaches to to, well, to the same problem. At the, mo- at the moment, no one can buy insurance for yeah. social care because it's uninsurable. And in effect, our contribution uh, via income tax 
is a form of insurance with with regard to health, isn't yeah. it? Because yeah. we we pay our tax and then we know that it's free at the point of delivery. It, it almost, I think the mechanism for generating extra revenue is a topic for economists to discuss, but the end result is that we need more money in the system. So that it, it benefits all of us because none of us know, we're, we're all only ever one step away from potentially needing care and support. Uh, it can't, it's not predictable. So in the same way when we can't predict what our health needs are going to be, we have to find a way of pooling that risk uh, so that the whole of society can, you know, receive the health and care that they uh, need and deserve. And, and I think the very important point to make as well is that health and wealth are intimately entwined. If we've got many people having to come out of the workforce to support family, or if they themselves are unable to function because their health and care needs are not being met, uh, that creates other problems in society as well. Just one one final kind of overarching thought on that. Just on in in terms of either tax or insurance, um, we have a there's the demographic bulge that the means that the, we have an average older population, um, which means that the pressure on younger working people um, to either save for their future or possibly pay more tax in order to provide for their you know, older members of their own family or their own or their own future. Um, some people are going to see that are, are going to say that that. That workload, that's that that load is unfairly distributed. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think using national insurance contributions to generate the extra money is not a very good idea, to be honest. And you know, there are quite a substantial proportion of people receiving pensions that have substantial wealth and are taxpayers. And I think many of them um, wouldn't necessarily object to contributing. So I think that fairer mechanisms could be um, devised to help increase the money that's available. Okay, um, Jane, Dr. Jane Towson, uh, Chief Ex- Townsend, Chief Executive of the Home Care Association. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us on BBC Radio Shropshire.